Hello, I am Dr. He Srinivasa, working as an assistant professor of physics. In this video, I am going to explain some concept of polarization, which is a syllabus in physics for second BSc third sem student. The learning objectives of this video are production and detection of plane polarized light, circularly polarized light and elliptically polarized light. First of all, what are the types of polarized light? We all know about the polarization phenomena and also polarized light in last videos. There are three types of polarized light. One is linearly polarized light and the second one is circularly polarized light and the third one is elliptically polarized light. What is plane polarized light? When vibrations takes place only in one direction parallel to the plane through the axis of beam, light is said to be plane polarized. In plane polarized light, the electric vectors of all the wave trains in a beam of light oscillate in a certain constant orientation. That means plane polarized light is one in which it having vibrations in only one plane or only one directions. So here the light vectors are vibrate in only one direction, say along y direction only. So these vibrations are restricted to one single plane. Therefore it is called plane polarized light and also it is called linearly polarized light. What is circularly polarized light? When two plane polarized light waves of equal amplitudes, equal frequencies and with a phase difference of pi by 2 or a part difference of lambda by 4 superimpose, then the tip of the resultant light vector traces a circle. This is called circularly polarized light. Here there are two waves. So one wave is moving along the y direction. I mean the wave particles vibrate in y direction. And the another wave is vibrating along z direction say when these two waves vibrating perpendicular to each other superimpose we get a circularly polarized light then the tip of the resultant light vector traces a circle this is called circularly polarized light so the animation picture of circularly polarized light you can see in in this video. Here there are two waves. This is one wave moving in this direction and this is another wave which is moving in another direction say z. Uh, this is x direction. The vibrations are in the x direction. Here the vibration of this uh, red colored wave is in the y direction. So the resultant of these two wave gives rise to the circularly polarized light. Due to superimposition of these two waves, one blue colored wave and one red colored wave gives rise to the circularly polarized light. That means the tip of the resultant light vector. This is the resultant. One is the X component and the another one is Y component. So the resultant is along the diagonal. The resultant vector I mean the tip of the resultant light vector so traces a circle. This is called circularly polarized light. Here also you can see how the superposition of the two perpendicular waves gives rise to the circularly polarized light. See one is red color wave. This is red color wave more vibrate in this direction and the another one is blue color view, the vibrations of the red and uh, blue color wave gives rise to the resultant that is green color view. 
द टिप ऑफ दिस ग्रीन कलर वेव से ट्रेस से सर्कल दिस इज हाउ द सुपर पोशन ऑफ द टू आइडेंटिकल वेव्स दैट इज हैविंग सेम एम्पलीट्यूड फ्रीक्वेंसी ट्रैवलिंग इन द सेम डायरेक्शन विथ ए फेज डिफरेंस ऑफ पाई बाई टू गिवस राइज टू ए सर्क्युलरली पोलराइज लाइट एबिटिकली पोलराइज लाइट when two plane polarized light waves of unequal amplitude in the case of circularly polarized light there are equal amplitudes but in the case of elliptically polarized light unequal amplitudes equal frequencies and with a phase difference of pi by 2 or a part difference of lambda by 4 superimpose then the tip of the resultant light vector traces an ellipse this is called elliptically polarized light so here this is one wave having the amplitude say a this is another wave having the amplitude say b but the amplitude of this wave is more than the amplitude of this wave therefore there are two waves of unequal amplitude and having same frequencies superimposed and also the another condition is that they should move with a phase difference of pi by 2 or a part difference of lambda by 4 superimposed then the tip of the resultant light vector traces an ellipse this is called elliptically polarized light so production of linearly plane polarized light how we can produce the linearly plane polarized light if a beam of monochromatic light is passed through a nickel prism it splits up into extraordinary ray and ordinary ray so what is a nickel prism nickel prism is a device used to produce and analyze the plane polarized light nickel prism is a device it is devised by william nickel use it to produce and analyze the plane polarized light what happens if a beam of monochromatic light is passed through a nickel prism it splits up into ordinary ray and extraordinary ray the ordinary ray is totally internally reflected back at the canada balsam layer and is absorbed while the e ray passes through the nickel prism here this is the ordinary light or unpolarized light having vibrations in all directions so and also it is represented by the two kinds of vibrations vibrations parallel to the plane of the paper and also vibrations the dots indicates perpendicular to the plane of the paper there are two vibrations hence it is an ordinary light or unpolarized light incident on this nickel prism and this is the calcite canada balsam interface this nickel prism splits up this unpolarized light into two components one component is called ordinary ray and the other component is called extraordinary ray the ordinary ray having vibrations perpendicular to the plane of the paper whereas extraordinary ray having vibrations parallel to the plane of the paper this ordinary ray gets reflected back at the calcite canada balsam interface hence it is eliminated whereas extraordinary ray is transmitted through the nickel prism having vibrations in only one plane which is parallel to the plane of the paper or incidence it is a plane polarized light that is why we are here both ordinary ray and extraordinary ray are plane polarized but in this nickel prism we are eliminate the ordinary ray and the transmit the extraordinary ray this is the plane polarized light this is how we can produce the linearly plane polarized light using the nickel prism the emergent beam means plane polarized this emergent extraordinary ray is plane polarized detection of plane polarized light 
the how we can detect the plane polarized light the plane polarized light to be analyzed is passed through a nickel prism and when this prism is gradually rotated about the incident beam as axis if the intensity of the emergent light varies from zero to maximum twice on each rotation of the nickel prism then the incident light is plane polarized if the intensity of emergent light does not vary the incident light is unpolarized so this is the plane polarized light so uh, transmitted through the nickel prism is passed through analyzer when this analyzer is rotated about the incident beam as an axis if we observe two times maximum and two times zero intensity exactly then the incident light is called linearly or plane polarized light how it becomes two times maximum and two times zero so when the analyzer like a nickel prism is rotated when the principal section of this analyzer or nickel prism is parallel to the vibration of the incident beam then the intensity is maximum if you go on rotating the analyzer such that the principal section of the analyzer or nickel prism is perpendicular to the vibrations of the plane polarized light we get zero intensity because in that direction there is no vibrations of the incident light again if we go on rotating the nickel prism such that it rotates by an angle 180 degree the principal section of the nickel prism is again parallel to the vibration of the incident light then we get the intensity maximum for 270 degree rotation the principal section of the nickel prism is once again perpendicular then we get zero intensity so that is why if the intensity of the emergent light varies from zero to maximum twice on each rotation of the nickel prism then the incident light is plane polarized if the intensity of the emergent light does not vary then the incident light is unpolarized because unpolarized light having vibrations in all direction that is why when the nickel prism or analyzer is rotated the intensity of the light does not vary this indicates the unpolarized light so production of circularly polarized light circularly polarized light is produced when ordinary ray and extraordinary ray of same amplitude vibrating at right angles to each other with a phase difference of pi by 2 or a part difference of lambda by 4 should be superposed plane polarized light from a nickel prism is made to fall normally on the surface of quarter wave plate such that the vibrations of the plane polarized light makes an angle 45 degree this is important vibrations of the plane polarized light makes an angle of 45 degree with the direction of the optic axis with the quarter wave plate then incident ray is split into ordinary ray and extraordinary ray and superposed to give a, a circularly polarized light as i explained earlier earlier that means here ordinary ray and extraordinary ray having vibrations perpendicular to each other and also superposed to give a circularly polarized light like this so the tip of the resultant light vector traces a circle in this animated picture the resultant wave due to superposition of the two waves is a circular so again you can see how the superposition of the two waves gives rise to a circularly polarized light in these two animated pictures this is one wave this is another wave the resultant of these two waves is a circularly polarized light in this diagram also the blue colored wave and the red colored wave superposed to give a green color resultant wave this resultant wave 
is a circularly polarized. The tip of the resultant wave traces a circle. How we can detect the circularly polarized light? This is linearly polarized light tilted at 45 degree to the direction of the crystalline optic axis. That means when the vibrations of the incident beam makes an angle of 45 degree to the optic axis is made to incident on the optic uh, quartz crystal that is lambda by 4 plate and the resulting I mean the emergent ordinary and extraordinary ray gives rise to a circularly polarized light. This is the product this diagram explains the production of the circularly polarized light. Okay, this is another diagram to show the circularly production of circularly polarized light and it moves in the anti-clockwise circularly polarized. This is unpolarized light becomes linearly polarized and having vibrations 45 degree with the direction of the optic axis. Then the emergent light is the combination of O ray and E ray and the resultant of O ray and E ray is the circularly polarized. So the important principle of the quarter wave plate is that it produces the circularly polarized light. Detection of circularly polarized light. When the circularly polarized light is allowed to pass through rotating analyzer, the intensity of emerging beam is similar to unpolarized light. To distinguish between them, the beam is allowed to fall on another quarter wave plate. When the circularly polarized light is allowed to pass through rotating analyzer, the intensity of emerging beam is similar to unpolarized light because in circularly polarized light, so the amplitudes in all direction is same and uh, it traces a circle, therefore intensity does not vary as in the case of unpolarized light I explained in the earlier. To distinguish between them, the beam is again allowed to fall on another quarter wave plate. This quarter wave plate converts the circularly polarized light into plane polarized light. Intensity of the emergent light varies from zero to maximum twice on each rotation of the nickel prism. It is circularly polarized because as I told you, when this circularly polarized light is incident on quarter wave plate, this is the circularly polarized light, incident on the quarter wave plate, this quarter wave plate converts this circularly polarized light back to the plane polarized light. When this plane polarized light is incident on the analyzer, we get two times extinction that is the intensity of the light becomes maximum twice and zero times. If it shows like this then the light is called circularly polarized. Intensity of the emergent light varies from zero to maximum twice on each rotation of the nickel prism it is circularly polarized. If the intensity of the light does not vary, it is called unpolarized light. So this is the unpolarized light having vibrations in all directions. It is made to fall on the quarter wave plate. It emerges through the quarter wave plate, remains unpolarized. Again, as it is unpolarized, when the nickel prism or analyzer is rotated, there is no variation in the intensity of light. If there is no variation in the intensity of the light on rotating the analyzer, then the incident beam is called RM uh, unpolarized light. So like this, we can distinguish the whether the emergent light from the quarter wave plate is a circularly polarized or unpolarized. Production of Elliptically polarized light. Elliptically polarized light is produced if the two waves 
vibrating at right angles to each other and having unequal amplitude should have a phase difference of pi by 2 and a part difference of lambda by 4 should be superposed. So in the case of circularly polarized light there are equal amplitudes. In the case of elliptically polarized light unequal amplitudes. Plain polarized light is made to fall normally on a quarter wave plate such that the vibrations of the plane polar light make an angle other than 45 degree. In the case of circularly polarized light, the vibration should make an angle of 45 degree with the haptic axis. But in the case of elliptically polarized light, the plane polarized light make an angle other than 45 degree. This is the difference with the direction of the haptic axis of the quarter wave plate. Plain polarized light is made to fall normally on a quarter wave plate such that the vibrations of the plane polarized light make an angle other than 45 degree with the direction of the optic axis of the quarter wave plate. Then it produces elliptically polarized light. So this is the unpolarized light having vibrations in two mutual perpendicular directions. One is parallel to the plane of the paper and another one is these dots indicates the vibrations perpendicular to the plane of the paper on a nickel prism it splits up into O ray and E ray. So we get a plane polarized light. This nickel prism converts ordinary or unpolarized light into plane polarized light. The vibrations in the plane polarized light is such that it is not equal to 45 degree to the optic axis. So on the incident on the quarter wave plate, the vibrations from the nickel prism incident on the quarter wave plate such that the angle is other than 45 degree with the optic axis. It becomes elliptically polarized light. So this is the production of the elliptically polarized light. So this is the animated picture of the elliptically polarized light. Again there is a two waves, combination of the two waves. One wave is a blue colored wave and the another wave is red colored wave. The red colored wave having amplitude larger than the blue colored wave. The so superposition of the blue colored wave and the red colored wave gives rise to a resultant green colored wave. The tip of the resultant vector traces an ellipse. This is how an elliptically polarized light can be produced. Detection of elliptically polarized light. The beam of elliptically polarized light is allowed to fall on a nickel prism. If the beam is elliptically polarized, the intensity varies from a maximum to a minimum. Maximum to a minimum. In the case of circularly polarized light, so there is no variation in the intensity. But in the case of elliptically polarized light, the intensity varies from a maximum to a minimum value when the nickel prism is rotated. This is similar to partially polarized light. In the case of circularly polarized light, the, it is similar to unpolarized light. Whereas in the case of elliptically polarized light, it is similar to partially plane polarized light. To distinguish between the elliptically polarized light or partially polarized light, the original beam is again allowed to fall on a quarter wave plate and then on a nickel prism. So this quarter wave plate converts this elliptically polarized light once again to the linearly polarized light and the linearly polarized light is analyzed through the nickel prism. To distinguish between the elliptically polarized light or partially polarized light, the original beam is allowed to fall on a quarter wave plate and then on a nickel prism. Intensity of the emergent light varies from 0 to maximum 
twice on each rotation of the nickel prism then it is called elliptically polarized if the intensity of the light not extinct not completely extinguished i mean two times maximum and two times minimum when studied by a rotating nickel prism the original beam is partially polarized so once again in this diagram so the elliptically polarized light is passed through quarter wave plate this quarter wave plate converts this elliptically polarized light back to the plane polarized light when this plane polarized light is analyzed by rotating the nickel prism if the two times extinction takes place then the incident beam is called elliptically polarized so if the extinction does not takes place then it is called partially plane polarized because when partially plane polarized light is incident on a quarter wave plate it becomes partially plane polarized light and this uh, partially plane polarized light is analyzed through a nickel prism there is a variation in intensity with the maximum intensity and zero no variation actually no variation in the intensity of the light then it is called partially polarized if there is a variation in the intensity of light from maximum to zero it is a elliptically polarized if there is no variation i mean uh, only variation of intensity from maximum to minimum not zero then uh, light is called partially polarized so these are the books i have used for reference for making the video thank you for watching